the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for saying yes. I will keep Sunday holy. And we are now, what are we, in the fourth Sunday of Easter? Yes. I have to look at my book, the cheat sheet. Right? We are celebrating Easter and letting that impact us. And this is Good Shepherd Sunday. So we think of Jesus who has a sheepish grin. Wah, wah, wah. The jokes don't get better. Hopefully we get better. We get better by choosing to be in God's flock. How do we choose to be in his flock? You'll have to stay tuned for the homily. The times that we have chosen to leave Christ in his teachings, let's ask the Lord for his forgiveness and come back to him now. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the center of the Holy Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Alleluia. Alleluia. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Alleluia. Alleluia. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Alleluia. Alleluia. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Alleluia. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So do you think a train operator, like, you know, people are trying to, Diane is back, let's say, in um, the Brooklyn? 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 Diane's back in Brooklyn. That means you're a Yankee fan? Well, I am. <laughs> so she's back in Brooklyn and she's going to take the subway. Right? Jess is terrified of the subway. Diane knows the subway like the veins on the back of her hand. And she's going to take the subway. Do you think that the person who is driving the subway and closing the doors is trying to, like, chomp people getting in and out of the subway? No. Jess is refusing to listen to the gospel. <laughs> no, she can't hear us over there. That's all right. The air conditioning's on. But like, no, Diane says no. Right? The people are, who are trying to care for the train, they're not trying to squish people between the doors. No. They want people to get on and to get off easily. They're not trying to chomp them. Okay? Um, what if, what if like, Diane's son is running a garage for a car company. When the cars are trying to enter the garage, do you think he's trying to smash them with the garage door? No. No? Although we may think that's kind of fun, he wouldn't be doing that at his job, right? He wouldn't be trying to, like, chop them off. Do you think if, like, um, let's see, we need one more example. I, I, well, we don't need one more example, but I would like one more example of this. Um, well, an airplane. Do you think if people are trying to enter an airplane that the stewardesses are going to try to close the door on someone trying to get in? I would hope not. Right? No. Right? But if you saw someone trying to enter that airplane through, like, breaking a window or trying to climb up the wheel well, would you be concerned about who's trying to do that? Yes. Absolutely. In today's world, we would think that there'd be, like, a terrorist, right? Someone trying to, like, get on the plane illegally, right? Or outside of the normal way. Right? But generally... People who are operating trains and doors, they want people to come in. They're not using the doors or the gates to chop people in half or to keep people out. Right? So, you know, we talk about heaven as like a gated community, which there's a whole series of jokes about that. Um, do you think God is trying to keep people out or is he trying to let people in? Right. It's, so G, Diane says trying to let people in. So if Jesus is a shepherd, and that's his analogy, do you think a shepherd is going to just close the gate and say, forget it, any of the sheep that want to come in, I'm not going to let them in? No, no the sh shepherd wants all of his sheep to come in. right? And this sheep gate that Jesus is talking about, think of like a cul-de-sac. Right? If you think of like a cul-de-sac, a lot of people live on them, right? and there's like one way into a cul-de-sac and well, one way out. And so what the shepherd would do is he would lie down in this, like, stone enclosure, right? He would literally sleep at the front of it. And so you literally have to step on him to get in or get out. And he would do that. Shepherds would do that to protect the sheep. They would also do that, well, to keep the sheep safe. All right. So a shepherd driving his sheep into this collar sack is not going to, like, close the gate on them. He wants his sheep to get in there. Does God want us to be saved? Does he want us to come home to heaven and have everlasting life? Yeah, he does. So do you think God is going to try to restrict um, access to eternal life? No, right? It's called leading the witness. Right? No, he's trying to get as many people in. However, not all the sheep want to come in. And that's a different story. 
And so what Jesus is talking about here, and like the, the Pharisees don't understand him in the beginning, so he's going to tell you straight out, like, hey, I'm the way. There's no other way into heaven except through me. You're going to hear about this next week. We'll talk a little bit more about it next week. And Jesus says, everyone who came before me is robbers. What is he talking about? Is all the prophets robbers? No. But in the history of Israel, the people who were in charge of the religion appointed by God through Abraham and then Moses, they started to use the religion for their own benefit and not for the people. And they started to get restrictive. And Ezekiel will write about this all in his prophecy. And the temple is going to be destroyed, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's, ter it's terrible. But God gave him a promise that one day it's not going to be like that. One day the leaders are not going to put their interest in mind. One day I, God, I'm going to come and I'm going to bring all my people together. Right? And in today's world, we have a lot of leaders that are thinking about their own benefit. Is that true? Yes. I mean, that's, you don't have to look, you can just look anywhere. That's always happening, sadly. It happens in religion too. And so when Jesus comes on the scene, he is fulfilling this promise and this prophecy that he gave, that God gave through Ezekiel. I will shepherd my people. And here he is telling the Jews that he is the shepherd. He's the gate. He's the doorway. And there's only one way in. There's only one way out. And when Jesus in the resurrection it comes to the disciples in the upper room, what, how does he come in? Does he knock on the door? What does he do? Right? He, he comes to them even though the doors are locked. Yeah. That's interesting. And he does it more than once. Why do you think Jesus is like passing through locked doors? Because he's trying to show that he now is the door. Like, I don't know if anyone sees that. He's trying to say, I'm the way. Well, he's the way, the, way, the truth, and the life. To what? To everlasting life. It gets even better. So St. Peter in that first reading, the, oh, he's preaching. This is his first sermon. You know how many people are converted in his first sermon? Jess can't hear. She wouldn't even listen to the sermon. <laughs> Diane would listen. She'd have to because she she's sitting up front. 3,000 and my deacon's walking in during the homily. Hello, Deacon John. <laughs> Diane knows how many people were converted in St. Peter's first homily? 3,000. 3, All right, where are we going with this? So the people, St. Peter is preaching to them. Jesus had come to the upper room, breathed on him, gave him the Holy Spirit. And they say, well, what do we have to do to be saved? And Peter gives an answer. It's the same answer that we give in the Catholic Church. But if you ask like a lot of modern Christians in our country today, what do you have to do to be saved? You know what they're going to say? You have to believe in your heart, accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and believe and like have this altar call. That is not what St. Peter says. Right? He says two things. He says, repent and be baptized. So to one level, our brothers and sister Christians, when they say you have to accept Jesus in your heart, I think what they mean is repentance. But I, a lot of them can be understood to mean you literally have to just say these words and think these things. What St. Peter says, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Right? Jesus says, or St. Peter says, you know, um, that the whole house of Israel know for certain that God made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. And everyone hears that and they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to be busted now. And they're like, what are, we, what are we to do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he goes a little farther. Because we have Christians in the world today that say, you Catholics, why do you baptize babies? We think you should only baptize someone when they're old enough to choose Jesus for themselves. And they can accept in their heart, Jesus is their Lord and Savior and confess with their lips. But St. Peter says, it's interesting, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the promises made to you and to your children, and those who are far off unto all whom the Lord Jesus will call. For the Jewish people, could a baby enter the covenant of Israel? Yes or no? Diane, say yes. Yes. Yeah, through circumcision. That's a pretty touchy subject, right? But a little baby, through circumcision, is brought into the the covenant that God is making. Well, if God is so generous in the old covenant is to bring children in, do you think he's going to get more restrictive in the new? If his criticism, especially for the leaders of Israel, is that they were getting too restrictive and only looking at their benefit? Right? So literally he will say here, have your whole house baptized. And you'll see this again in the book of Acts, again and again and again. They say to Peter, what must we do to be saved? And Peter says, All, always, believe, or repent, and be baptized. That psalm that we had, right? We're saying, hallelujah, but the Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I should want. We know that psalm. This is, we got sheep all over the place. And what is being said here is this. Let's bring it all together. 
if you wish to be in Jesus's flock and are acting or giving any sign that you're in his flock, he's not going to cut you out. Well, what are those signs? The sacraments. When at our parish this week, we're having First Holy Communion, right? Jesus last week, he's in the upper room or he's on the road to Emmaus. They don't recognize him. Then he points to the Eucharist. When you and I choose to enter in through the sacraments, we are cooperating with Jesus, who is the doorway into eternal life. That's what we say the sacraments are, because Jesus chooses to meet us through them. If you think of Adam and Eve, one eating act of disobedience is undone with one eating act of obedience. Adam and Eve decided we're going to eat what we want when we want to do it. Well, what's the, what's the antidote for that poison? Lord, I will eat what you want me to eat as you want me to eat it. Holy Communion. Right? The sacrament, Adam and Eve, like, I'm going to do what I want. Well, no one wants to go to a priest and go to confession because that's embarrassing. That's humbling. And that is the antidote to the sin, well, to whatever pride we all have when we choose the sin. Going back into God's ways through an encounter with the physical world, with a spiritual meaning, that's the way to life. Not as we make it up, but as God gives it to us. I'm talking about baptism. Right, so the sacraments are things that have physical realities, that have spiritual realities behind them. There's a symbolic element and a spiritual reality that comes about. When we do them, not because we want to, because God tells us, we're showing humility and obedience. And what is it like? It's like a sign of someone trying to get on the subway. This is why the Catholic Church teaches you have to go to confession how many times a year? At least once. At least once. If you go to confession at least once a year, you're showing that you have the disposition of wanting to be in the flock that gets into eternal life. How many times do you have to receive com communion in a year? At least once. Right? Do you, Diane, were you married in the church? Yes. Yes. Her and Pete were married in the church, right? There's many couples whose marriages are not in the church, but when they take their marriage and they bring it into the church, they're showing through that action that I want to bring my relationship into your life, Jesus. Well, that is an act of obedience that is showing that you want to be in his flock. Well, I don't think you need this. Well, hold on. We've talked about this in the past. Very brief. I don't have my keys on me. But remember, we talked about a Jeep. If I'm going to give you a prize, a Jeep Cherokee or a Jeep Gladiator, and I have a keys, if I'm the giver of a gift, I get to decide how it's given, not you, right? So... People are asking, Father Dave, did you pass your motorcycle license test? Did I pass my test? Not yet. Not yet, because at the time this is being recorded, it is not taking place. It takes place tomorrow. Right? Maybe I will pass, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll let you know at the end of Mass. Maybe I won't. Maybe I have to sign up for part two. Who knows? Right? I, I don't get to tell the state of New Jersey, here's how I pass my motorcycle test. They get to tell me, here's what you have to do to pass. Right? We can argue about that. If I'm giving a present to Diane, I get to decide how to give it to her. Diane doesn't say to me, you have to give me this present this way. It doesn't work like that. And many people think, I'm going to tell God how I go to heaven. Well, no, you're not. If you think like that, you ain't getting to heaven yet. You're going to be in purgatory for a while until you're humble enough to accept that Jesus is the way in. And here's how he comes to us. He comes to us through the sacraments. Right? And so sometimes people come to us in the Catholic Church and they yell at us because they can't be a godparent for someone because, why? Well, maybe they're married outside of the church. We don't say they're going to hell. We don't say, you know, that they're getting damned. We don't say that at all. But we say, hey, if you're, you got, you're a Catholic and you got married outside of the church, you're choosing to walk outside of the sacraments. We're choosing to follow Jesus in the sacramental way. Well, why? Because that's exactly what St. Peter did. That's what the apostles do. That's what's happening from the very beginning. And we believe that Jesus wanted it this way. As he says, this is my body, take and eat. Why we make a big deal when kids come to First Holy Communion? Because they're showing they want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, the kids are showing they want to be in that number. How? By being humble enough to come through the sacraments. The sacraments are signs of God's grace, and they're also signs of our response to that grace. And... Can I be a guide, a trail guide for someone in Montana while I'm in New Jersey? No. I have to be in Montana. Right? For, hello to all of you Catholics out there in Montana. Right? For me to walk in the way of Jesus in the sacramental way, I have to be living that. Right? If I didn't have valid holy orders, I couldn't be your priest. Right? 
by like I'm gonna decide to, to start my own church. Well, that church, you may be doing a lot of good things, but that may not be what God has wanted. Well, how do we know what he wants? Well, we look to the scriptures and this is what we find Jesus doing all the time. This is what we find the apostles doing. So we do the same thing. When you and I say yes to the sacraments, we are saying yes to coming in through Jesus and the way that he chose to give it to us. We didn't make these up. We receive them as these divine gifts and we enter life through them. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's raise our prayers to Almighty God. For the church and her ministers throughout the world, may the Holy Spirit embolden their faithful witness to the resurre resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer. For our nation and all who serve in government positions, may the Lord promote peace and unity in their hearts and daily work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are hungry in body, mind, or spirit, may Jesus, the bread of life, fill them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community of faith, may God inspire us in withstanding any trials we face as we share our faith with love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they come to share in the baptismal promise of new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those children making their first Holy Communion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the end to coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now for those petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that we may not resist God's grace and we may cooperate with uh, what he has put into the world, especially the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That there may be a return to the sacraments, especially the sacraments of uh, confession. And for those who are in relationships outside of the church, that they may bring them into God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty Father, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask. We ask them in faith through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Grant your prayer, Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us will be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of Easter, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Martha, St. Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, with God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. To offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures. The sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. and my deacon's walking in during the homily. Hello, Deacon John. Dang it. <laughs> I am so sorry. That's all right. How could you know? How could you know we do a rough draft on, on Wednesday when we normally do it on Thursday? If you need notes, I'll be happy to mention it. God bless you. I'll be your <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> That was terrible. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was like really depressing. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Let's do it. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. That's it. That's it. An old faithful.